Hello and welcome to the Rock River Valley Traction Company. This is going to be part two of the control systems uh, overview video. Uh, be sure to check out part one if you're interested in the kind of nerdy side of things out here. Uh, in today's video, we are going to look at uh, what is controlling the line car there and the Bernie that's way down there. Uh, starting out like this because I got all this stuff out of the barn and it looks pretty cool. I uh, haven't had uh, this much equipment out at one time in quite a while. I'm doing some reorganization in the barn today. I had to get the uh, open car and the line car out so I can get the weed sprayer ready to go for the year. Uh, it's back here so we're just going to kind of switch everything out. And, uh, yeah, the barn <laughs> kind of empty now. Got the curved side sitting back there and the box motor and the track speeder. But, uh, and all my junk. Uh, enough of that. So let's talk uh, control systems. We're going to start out with the Bernie car here. I brought it up to the turntable so it's a little easier to... Uh, get underneath and have a look at things So let's do that. Uh, this car has two axles on it. So it's considered a single truck Bernie and uh, It's got two traction motors one for each axle and uh, You can see uh, Right there. It's our motor uh, So that's one and the other one uh, uh, You can kind of see it up through the right there same thing though, it's got a, I don't know if I can, uh, you can see the chain, it's a sprocket there. It looks just like this. Uh, they're identical motors, 36 volt DC uh, motors, and they are wired in series. So the actual uh, feed to the motor for full power is uh, 72 volts. There's two squirrels here my attention for a minute they're gone now <laughs> must be traction fans uh so the underside of this car is pretty interesting uh this this car was constructed in 1956 and this under frame is largely original from that time so you can see uh we did here was used uh like a leaf spring out of a truck or trailer or something uh bearings on this car uh, there's dowel pins inside here uh, to make like a needle roller bearing and a grease zerk here to grease them up um, it looks like originally this had some uh, some sort of a uh, springed bearing cap I'm not quite sure why why you would want that but that's what they did. Um, it's since been welded. Like as long as I've been coming out here, that this has been welded. So, uh, but anyways, yeah. So two two motors uh, under here, and then uh, the power supply. It's really hard to see because all the stuff's kind of tucked up in the frame. But uh, there's two of these transformers, and these take the 240 volts and step it down to 120 volts. And there are two of them. That 120 volts is then rectified, uh, which I don't know if you can kind of see, maybe this is better. Look at my rat's nest of wiring in here. Uh, you can see the rectifiers right there. Four big diodes. And uh, so that makes our, our DC bus of about 160 volts because it's a full wave bridge uh, then there's some contactors over here uh, these are reversing contactors to swap the uh, polarity on the fields of the motors for forward reverse direction um, then there's some power supplies here this is for the control circuitry for the contactor coils and some of the stuff up on the top side but yeah you can see the two tra two big uh, main transformers there uh, and the rectifier stack and uh, I think these caps right here, if I remember right, these are for the 
uh, control circuit. They're not for the, the output of the main transformers. Um, also, you might be interested to see how the brake works on this. So uh, here's the brake shoe. I know, you guys will laugh. This is a wood block. It's what I use for uh, everything out here is just uh, two by fours for brake blocks. And then this is a linkage that moves. Uh, on the other side, there's an air cylinder. Take a look at that. Beautiful day out here. Look at this springtime. Everything is in bloom. Mosquitoes will be coming out any day. Uh, so here's the other the other uh, brake shoe right here and the air cylinder for that is right there so it pushes the linkage Let's see it kind of moving the linkage this arm goes up here pulls on this arm here which then shoves that so uh yeah that's pretty much the underside propulsion here you can see the back side of the of the motors again this uh, 36 volt probably uh two horsepower or one and a half horsepower uh series wound dc motors all right let's go top side all right so here we are inside of the bernie and uh I will also say that uh, initially this car had uh, permanent magnet motors on it. Um, up until about 10 years ago, it had two 90-volt uh, DC permanent magnet motors and had um, stove elements for the resistors uh, for the speed control. Uh, kid you not, there were actual, uh, you know, the coiled... Uh, stove elements, uh, electric stove. There was a whole bank of them underneath this car. And that is what uh, would uh, give you the series resistance for the traction motor. Now, uh, what ended up happening to those motors is uh, over time, the vibration uh, broke the glue that was holding the magnets on the motors. And uh, so they locked up uh, when the magnets fell into the armature. So uh, those were eliminated and we went with the series wound uh, 36 volt motor. So uh, this now has uh, an IGBT based uh, speed control, very similar to what the steeple cab uses. And uh, you can see, uh, the, actually this was the first IGBT uh, control system that I put in out here. And uh, here is the power side of it. So um, inside here, we've got, uh, there's IGBT right there. There's a snubber diode and a commutation capacitor. And then this is the bus uh, capacitor. So the DC uh, power comes into this cap and then it goes into the IGBT. Uh, there's a gate signal. These are the gate gate drive wires right here. Uh, there's a shunt here so we can keep an eye on our current flow going to the motors. Uh, so that is the power amplifier section. And then over here on the other side, yeah, I know, I never put this stuff in a box. And uh, that's because when I built this thing, uh, I thought, sure, I was going to have to do some modifications um to it but actually it just it went in and it worked fine and has been working fine uh for over 10 years now um so the throttle control signals similar to the um, steeple cab where we have a controller which i'll show you the controller here in a little bit but uh those signals come in uh here there's uh, i believe eight points on this uh, controller and so it takes those eight points and converts it to an analog voltage reference for each point. And that can be adjusted uh, right here. So each throttle, which you can kind of see, I think I labeled those on the bottom. can hardly see now, but uh, in any case, 
there's uh, one for each throttle notch right there. So I can dial those in. That basically allows me to um, tweak the torque for each notch. And uh, so yeah, it's, um, each notch has its own reference voltage, which goes to our uh, trusty little TL494 uh, IC that generates the PWM signal. And then that PWM uh, goes out to this uh, VLA500 uh, IGBT driver. These things are super nice. Um, it's a little uh, all-in-one package. You just feed it uh, 15 volts and it's got its own isolated power supply, its own optically isolated uh, input signal, and it handles driving the IGBT. You just have to uh, add some uh, series gate resistance of your own choosing. And uh, yeah, these are the gate wires, uh, gate drive wires that go out. So um, that that design with this driver, um, the IGBT and the TL494 has just been perfect. Uh, never had a single problem with them. Uh, this is just a little power supply. I think I took that out of a VCR or something. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's the drive signal. And then up here is the cockpit. Now, looking at the uh, air brake, and I'm going to do a separate video on the air brakes uh, at some point, but uh, just so you can kind of see what this car has. So there's a little compressor right here, and uh, then there's this variable uh, brake valve, and here's the gauge that indicates. So we've got our main reservoir pressure is the white needle, and then uh, the red needle, hardly see it in the sun, but the red needle is the brake cylinder. So as I, as I pull on this, you can see that needle going up, the red needle. And I release it. So yeah, brake, there's nothing fancy about these brakes. All this is is just a, uh, it's basically just a regulator with a handle on it. So the more I pull it, the more pressure uh, comes out of the output of it, gives you more uh, brake pressure. All right, so. Uh, as far as instrumentation in this car, we've got uh, our AC line voltage, we've got our AC line current, we have our DC motor current, and we have our DC motor voltage, which our theoretical maximum here would be like 75 volts because it's two 36 volt motors wired in series. All right, um, this controller, it's a GE controller out of a uh, trolley car. And it's very similar to the one in the steeple cab and then it's got a, a cam to operate these fingers. And uh, the one difference is this one has little micro switches for the forward reverse. So I turn, this is the reverser key. You can, I don't know if you can hear the contactors. Anyway, it's just operating those little micro switches. You like this bare wire, so I took the cover off of this thing uh, to make this video, and it was completely chock full of uh, mouse nest. So over the winter, they've been eating the wiring in here, and I found out where they were coming in down here at the bottom. You can kind of see the little marks in the wire where he chewed his way in. So we gotta get that covered up. Um, I'm going to kill the power here so I can uh, show you how this controller works. All right, got the power killed now so I can run this without moving. So basically, as you turn the uh, operate handle, you can see these contacts close. Now this one differs from the one on the steeple cab uh, in that... The one in the steeple cab has kind of a unusual output pattern. It's not sequential like this. So as you turn uh, this one, you see each of those fingers just going sequentially. And the other one uh, kind of goes maybe like, you know, this one and that one, and then maybe this one, and then maybe these might open up, and then that one down there closes. So this one was uh, a lot easier to work with because it was just, uh, you know, sequential. Just kind of made sense the way it worked.
So, uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it in here. I do have a nice little bell uh, right here. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, take a ride and uh, see it all work. So as you can see with each notch, uh, the motor voltage goes up. Uh, so we'll stop here. So there's the first point. You can see our motor current, our line current is very low, but our motor current is quite high. There's the second notch, third notch, fourth notch, fifth. Oh, it, gets, it gets too crazy, <laughs> pretty bouncy. But hey, we might as well do a high-speed ride. We're, uh, we're right here on that part of the line. So let's, let's let her rip. Well, that was fun. I don't know if anyone else felt like they were uh, about to die like I did, but uh, always good for a high-speed run in the Bernie. So let's move over and talk about the line car. So I ended up bringing this up to the turntable as well because it was just easier to see underneath of it uh, what all was going on. So uh, this car again, single truck, just like the Bernie, it's got two axles only. And uh, this one, however, has a single uh, 36 volt DC motor, which you can see the back of it right here. Uh, the output of that motor goes to what I call a mid shaft. Uh, that's this guy right here. And you can see the big sprocket back there. So the motor has a little tiny sprocket, drives the great big sprocket uh, on the mid shaft, and then that uh, turns to these other two sprockets, uh, one chain to one wheel, one chain to the other wheel. So both wheels are driven by one motor. Uh, over here, you can, uh, just look better up into here, it's kind of a rat's nest, but uh, that, uh, that's the reversing contactors for the motor. Uh, this over here is a uh, snubber diode. And uh, this is the only piece of equipment that has uh, actually a cooled traction motor. So this little fan right here blows into the uh, commutator end of the traction motor uh, to give it a little bit of cooling. Now I had to do that because we used to use this car so heavily uh, that the motor would get like to where you couldn't even touch it. So I added I added that fan in there uh, to keep from burning the motor up. Never did burn the motor up, so I guess it's okay. Now, um, this car has, uh, when we go up top, I'll show you the main transformer that takes the 240 down to 120. And then there are, if you can see them up under here, there's... Uh, these transformers, so there's six of these transformers. Those are out of uh, like, a, like a roll uh, battery charger. Um, the ones, you know, that you pull around, um, big ones. So there's those, and then, uh, I don't know if you can see here, but, but back there, there's a heat sink, and there's a bunch of uh, bridge rectifiers. So there's six bridge rectifiers there. Uh, that makes our roughly 45 volts DC for the 36 volt motor. Uh, back here in the back then, looking at this again, you can just barely see the bus bars 
Uh, there's a whole stack of capacitors sandwiched in between those two pieces of wood. And there's a copper bus bar uh, tying them all together. So that gives us our nice um, beefy DC bus to supply the motor with. And then, uh, oh, here's some more capacitors too. I forgot there's a secondary bank uh, up here. This one has lots of bus capacitance. Uh, that's because we we used to run this car really hard um, and it was imperative that we had a good solid power supply for maximum pulling power. Uh, I will point out the wheels on this car are in terrible shape. Look at this. So this has like some kind of a casting defect in the flange. It's actually hollow in the flange. You can see part of it is chipped away. Um, part of this is the rim is chipping away. Like there's just no meat left. Uh, this poor car has just really been used and abused uh, over the years. Um, when I first started coming out here, this car had a repulsion induction motor on it. And so that's how its uh, speed was controlled, was via the lever that, that uh, came out of the back of that repulsion induction motor. And I converted it to a uh, golf cart motor because that repulsion induction motor had failed. So um, at that time, um, I put, you can see this is a wood frame. So this car was built in 1977. And... Um, it's got this wood frame. Uh, at that time that I converted the motor, I put a metal frame. I don't know if you can even see it in here, but there's angle iron right here, and it goes all the way around. So basically, um, and you can see the bolts right here. So this is how the angle iron is attached to the wood on the inside. Um, and then the bearing blocks are attached to that angle iron. So it just uh, stiffened the car up because as you can see how this is designed. So the uh, car frame here um, is sort of its own piece and then the car body is its own piece. And, and the car body is attached to the frame via these big old springs. So if we wiggle, oops, poles hitting. <laughs> the air compressor is trying to run, oops stop to that noisy thing so uh anyways yeah it's a bit of an odd design how this uh, works but as you can kind of see what was happening here to the wood is it was breaking so i added the uh frame maybe you can see it better in here you can see the angle iron frame that's in there so that just stiffened it up uh, to keep this poor thing from falling apart any more than it already was. Now, as far as the speed control, this was the very first electronic speed control that we had uh, out here. Um, if you look at some of the old videos of this line car, you will notice that on the side of it, there's a big wooden box on the side, and it had like a a duct like a uh, clothes dryer vent uh, hose a uh, duct hose hooked to it uh, to blow cooling air through it so that was the original uh, design of the speed control what i did for that was i used um, i think there were about 15 50 amp transistors just regular old uh, to3 package bipolar power transistors and so the DC bus runs into those, and then the output goes to the motor. Um, that box that was mounted, you know, here on the side was very problematic because it caught things along the right-of-way, and it just looked kind of hokey. I never really cared for it. Uh, after some time, I removed that box, and I repackaged all of it into this little box right here. Um, so basically it's uh it's got like a like a wind tunnel in here and i don't think you can see in there like this little fan you can kind of see the heat sink up in there but basically there's two stacks there's two stacks of five 
transistors. So there's 10 transistors total in there. Uh, I'm still using the same uh, 50 amp uh, bipolar power transistors. Um, and then there's a shunt under here for the ammeter. So the output of, uh, of the, uh, dang, there's a B over here. Just about got me. Um, so there's uh, output of that transistor bank goes through the shunt and then this cable goes over to the motor. So uh, yeah, old reliable uh, bipolar power transistors. I designed that thing, I was still in college. So that's been, I don't know, like 25 years um, that that thing has been purring away. I've never had a failure with that. So that's good. Uh, although now, of course, I use IGBTs just because they're much easier to work with. A lot less work uh, using just one IGBT block instead of trying to gang together a bunch of transistors with ballast resistors and all that jazz. Uh, so let's go up top and look at the controls. So uh, this air compressor sits back here for the brakes. I'll show you the brake cylinder real quick here on the other side this just has one brake cylinder and one brake block right here so here's our cylinder <laughs> here's the spring return that's a garage door spring and uh here's the block brake is set right now that block's been on there for many years and i mean it's it's wearing down but it's still got plenty of life left in it all right so uh, under here, here is the transformer that takes the 240, steps it down to 120. The 120 then goes to the battery charger transformers, uh, which then goes to the rectifiers, to the cap banks, to the transistor bank, and then out to the motor. Um, so this is the main power transformer. And then uh, here is the little circuit board uh, on that board. There is uh, our trusty old TL-494. And uh, just a little power supply to run that. Um, and then the throttle control on this one is uh, this guy here. It's just like a little joystick type control. And uh, it's got a lock on it. This is the reverser right here. And then so this, you, you got to pull this little deal up to release it. And then this just makes it go faster or slower. So it's just uh, like a little joystick, but it only travels in one direction. And then this is our air brake control and same kind of air brake gauge. Uh, instrumentation on this car, we have the uh, line current line voltage, traction motor, current, and then the uh, DC bus voltage, and then the traction motor voltage. All right, so this will always read like, uh, you know, between like uh, 30 and 45 volts. And then this will go up. Uh, the more you increase the throttle position, obviously you get more motor voltage. Um, and then, of course, our motor current. Now, you'll notice this uh, gauge. This is an actual uh, EMD locomotive gauge, which I kind of modified. I just went in and remarked uh, the motor currents on this. So instead of this reading 0 to 1,500 amps, it reads 0 to 300 amps. And uh, on this car, um, I've had it up as high as almost 200 amps. I don't think we've ever quite broken into the red before, but... Going up the hill, slugging a, a couple of ballast cars uh, with a whole bunch of cement blocks on the back to weigh the car down so it doesn't slip. Uh, we've pushed we pushed 200 amps before uh, with this guy. So uh, yeah, we'll take a little ride in this one, and uh, you can see kind of how it how it operates. All right, here we are in the cab, ready to make it move. We've got a good line voltage there. And uh, as you can see, we take this and 
or I push it forward. The faster we go. Got our brake control here. There's our air compressor, noisy air compressor. Our line current is showing uh, about 5 amps right now because that compressor is running. And as I increase the throttle here, you'll see the motor, motor current increase. And then here's our traction motor voltage versus supply voltage. Increase the throttle. See it go up. Of course, this thing it rides very rough. Uh, this car has always been a rough rider. It doesn't help that the wheels are egg-shaped from uh, sliding for so many years. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the operation uh, details of the line car. Now, someday, what uh, what I'd like to do is uh, convert this back to a uh, a point controller. I do have one more point controller uh, laying around that I could use. And uh, with that, that would give it a little more uh, realistic control, having the, uh, you know, the point controller like what's in the Bernie and the steeple cab. And also I wanna make it to where the remote will interface with this directly. Um, so that way I could use this car to pull the gondola and that would give me a nice walking platform uh, on both of, you know, from the back of this car directly into the gondola. I would have a nice work area while I'm operating this with the remote to make line repairs, which was actually what this car is technically supposed to be, is a line car. So, uh, yeah, uh, someday it's just uh, more, more things that I don't have time for. Okay, well, that's all for today. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed uh, watching this video. Don't forget to like comment subscribe all those good things share it with your friends uh really enjoy all your comments and everything uh so yeah uh next video uh i think i'll i think i'll tackle the air brake uh system because i'm getting a lot of comments about that so uh yeah until then everybody be safe out there and we'll see you next time